Go Harrison. Reverse engineering the news. The Dr. Strange Love Report with Harrison. Harrison with you, and as we all try to understand the mysteries of the Ebola virus, many of us simply know from reports that it has suddenly and sporadically spread thousands of miles across Africa. If the CDC's information is correct and Ebola is only transmissible through personal contact, questions arise as to how it quickly spread 3,500 kilometers without sufficient people to one by one spread it. European and African reports have implicated the World Health Organization now and several other United Nations agencies in introducing live Ebola virus into healthy Africans. That having started back in early 2014. Some of the questions we'll be covering is, was the Ebola virus purposely mixed with the cold virus, as DNA reports now suggest? Also, is the Ebola virus simply an act of God, a whimsy of nature, or was it indeed created in a bioweapons lab? And if so, what do we really need to know about it? Well, for more, we're joined by Professor Francis Boyle from the University of Illinois. Professor Boyle was responsible, by the way, for drafting the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989, along with legislation for the 1972 Biological Weapons Convention, served on the board of directors of Amnesty International, represented Bosnia, Herzegovina, and the World Court, holds a doctor of law, magna cum laude, as well as a Ph.D. in political science, both of those from Harvard University. Connecting us today, more famously, from a book he wrote, which is considered a template for understanding biological warfare, the book Biowarfare and Terrorism. Professor Francis Boyle, we welcome you to KPFK's Go Harrison on California Public Radio, as well as the Smart Show on the Progressive Radio Network. Thanks for having me on the uh, my best to your listening audience. Professor Boyle, here we have Ebola as a uh, health crisis in Africa. It's come to Dallas. It's been in Spain. It's emerging here and there, suddenly out of nowhere, exploding. Any sense on how this could have come about? The United States government um, ran three biosafety level four uh, labs in Guinea, uh, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. Um uh, and they do uh, all this type of Dr. Mengele work on biowarfare uh, agents, everything you could possibly imagine, uh, and I suspect uh, Ebola as well. Uh, so, it, it, you know, if you look at the government's account, this somehow migrated by bats. It, that You know, that's bat twaddle. Uh, it, it's or ridiculous. Guano. Right. I mean, you know, that, that every previous uh, outbreak... Uh, of Ebola had been contained, and it was uh, only a fifty uh, percent uh, uh, fatality rate. So this strain that we're dealing with has seventy uh, percent uh, fatality rate, and it is uh, Zaire Ebola. So how did uh, Zaire Ebola move thirty five hundred kilometers to? Uh, uh, West Africa. Well, it wasn't by bats. It, you know, I think it was uh, imported in there uh, into these labs, and you can take the story from there. We're talking to Francis Boyle, Professor Francis Boyle, leading American professor, practitioner, and advocate of international law. He was responsible for drafting the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989, the American implementing legislation for the 1972 Biological Weapons Convention, served on the board of directors of Amnesty International from 88 to 92, represented Bosnia, Herzegovina, and the World Court. And Professor Boyle teaches international law at the University of Illinois, Champaign, or Shampoo, but Nana, as we call it, and holds, <laughs> right, and holds a doctor right. of law, magna cum laude, as well as a Ph.D. in political science, both from Harvard University. We're looking at the notion of uh, U.S. bioweapons centers actually existing, these laboratories throughout Africa. We know famously how they exist in Fort Detrick, Maryland, how even down in Fort Lauderdale there are labs, and how bioweaponry has been done for many, many years. But the notion that this thing could have been created in a 
lab taken to Africa, and uh, we don't know if it was purposely released into the population this time, but we do know it somehow got into the population. What we don't know is how a virus like this can travel 3,000 miles or 3,500 kilometers when we're told it's not really airborne, you can't really sneeze it at somebody, you must only have the symptoms first, and casual contact won't do it. These are real scientific mysteries, aren't they? Well, I uh, I like to ply uh, Occam's razor here, uh, and uh, you know a scientific uh, theory to be sure. That if you look at uh, all the phenomena uh, characterizing this round of uh, Ebola uh, in West Africa, Spain, the United States, uh, everything. It can all be explained by uh, Ebola being a uh, genetically modified uh, organism. That can account for everything that we're seeing here, yes. And all this other stuff, uh, in my opinion, just pure uh, bull twaddle. And I'm so, going to uh, jump in, uh, Professor Boyle, GMO, genetically modified organism. We're going to have people that are, might be 14 or 15 who aren't exactly sure what that is. Uh, the analog to that very simply would be our GMO corn that we all eat in the United States, tomatoes. Right, Franken food by, uh, by Monsanto. That's right. And Novartis, yes, two happy fellows right. together in Switzerland. So, so these Franken foods, but we're talking Franken weapons using viruses i think that's correct yes and uh, i i think that that can account for everything um, we're seeing today i believe i just might have sent you uh, an email uh the national institute of uh, health uh has been doing biowarfare uh research uh on ebola where they took live ebola and uh, encapsulated it with the uh, common cold virus. I repeat that, live Ebola, and, and you add them with the vi- which is a virus, RNA virus, and you add them with the uh, uh, virus for the uh, common cold. So you get uh, a, a, a GMO organism here, that is uh, more dangerous than the regular Zaire Ebola from 50% to, to 70% fatality rate. And it appears to have the degree of contagion, not of the flu, uh, but of the, uh, of the common cold. So, you know, we, we know they do this uh, type of work. I, I, I have reports of it. I see the contracts of it. They've been doing it for quite some time. We have uh, uh, this Dr. Mengele up at the University of Wisconsin, Bucky Badger University, um, <laughs> who resurrected he resurrected the Spanish flu virus for the um, Pentagon. Let, let's, uh, addition, let's remind people what the Spanish flu is, so they get the the impact. Well, World War One it killed twenty million people. Yep. He brought this back to life for the Pentagon. Uh, he also. Uh, did GMO on uh, Ebola to make it more uh, virulent. And he also does uh, flu work, flu virus work, H5N1, um, and, and other types of flus. So one guy does, and, and, ha- and in addition, he also does this uh, uh, gain-of-function type research where it can uh, jump from one species to another, and he did uh, uh, flu GMO work uh, to make the flu jump from ferrets. And the reason he picked ferrets was that when it comes to uh, uh, flu, ferrets uh, work pretty much like human beings. So we know just from the public record and documents, contracts, if you look at them, that all this uh, type of uh, Dr. Mengele research has been going on for quite some time. Uh, I have a document here from the uh, Pentagon 1988 stating quite clearly uh, that the uh, Center for Disease Control was doing biowarfare work for the Pentagon uh, as early as 1988, and probably before that because they had to have uh, constructed the lab. And also uh, Columbia University was doing biowarfare work for the Pentagon in Liberia 
uh, as of uh, no later than 1988. Uh, so the CDC, uh, NIH, uh, Tulane University is over there in uh, uh, Kenema. Uh, uh, they have a long history of doing biowarfare work. And, of course, Fort Detrick uh, was over there uh, at, uh, at Kenema. In fact, uh, if you check the uh, website uh, for the Sierra Leone uh, government, their health ministry, this summer they shut down Kenema and blamed the, our U.S. bio warriors at Kenema for the outbreak of the pandemic, saying that uh, Tulane and, and the others were administering uh, some type of vaccine uh, against their people. Perhaps it was this uh, NIH uh, vaccine uh, involving live Ebola uh, with the virus for the uh, common cold. I, I don't know, but the facts I'm telling you are there in, in the public record. Nothing, you know, they, they slowly come out. Uh, it used to be, as of uh, uh, 1988, uh, you could get contracts to all these bio uh, warfare. You could get access to all these uh, bio warfare uh, contracts by means of a Freedom of Information Act request, and I did get them. But after uh, September 11th, uh, 2001, everything's gone underground, so it, it's more difficult to figure out what what they're doing. Harrison, there with you. Lot- I'm just going to I'm just going to jump in for a second Dr. Boyle and reintroduce you. Harrison with you. You are listening to Go Harrison. We are live streaming on the Progressive Radio Network also on a variety of FMs up and down the west coast of California through the Pacifica Radio Network along with Canada and Europe. We're talking to Professor Francis Boyle, leading American professor, practitioner and advocate of international law. He's the man responsible for drafting the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989, the American implementing legislation for the 1972 Bi- Biological Weapons Convention, also a doctor of law, magna cum laude, as well as a Ph.D. in political science, both from Harvard University. And he's talking about mixing the live Ebola virus on purpose with the cold virus that you and I spread to each other in shopping malls and shaking hands and just hanging out together and the implications of that. And we also have just recent reports talking about the World Health Organization. And we're going to ask Dr. Boyle about that in a moment. Should we trust them and the CDC? The World Health Organization and several other U.N. agencies were implicated in selecting and enticing African countries to participate in the testing events, promoting vaccinations, uh, pursuing various testing regiments. And in an article August 2nd of 2014, just a few months ago in West Africa, the headline was, Why are U.S. biological warfare researchers doing what are they doing in the Ebola zone? And asking those questions, it turns out that Tulane University that Professor Boyle mentioned had a physical presence there. The U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases, known as U.S. AMRID, uh, a well-known center. Fort Detrick. At Fort Detrick, Maryland. Uh, The CDC was there. Doctors Without Borders was also there. And Tecmira, a Canadian pharmaceutical company, was there along with uh, Britain's GlaxoSmithKline, another big pharmaceutical, and the Kenema Government Hospital, which which is now closed down, all there apparently doing vaccinations of healthy uh, uh, Africans with possibly Ebola virus. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I think it was some type of um, gmo uh live Ebola together with something like the uh, uh, cold virus, which is why it is um, more contagious than, and can't be contained, unlike any of the... Um, uh, previous Ebola outbreaks that were contained uh, with a 50% fatality rate, whereas this one is uncontained um, uh, with a 70% fatality rate. Yes, you you can't believe anything the CDC is telling you because they are up to their eyeballs in U.S. bio warfare work. Uh, same way with the uh, National Institutes of Health since 9/11/2001. Uh, we have spent $79 billion, billion dollars doing this uh, biowarfare dirty work. There are about 14,000 uh, U.S. Uh, scientists involved in biowarfare dirty work. Uh, I call them uh, death scientists, and this is death science. And we have about 1,500 labs here 
uh, in the United States doing uh, bio-warfare work. So this is not a question that um, they haven't been given enough money. They have been given enough money, and they've used it to do uh, offensive uh, bio-warfare work. The pretext was they were doing this to protect the American people uh, from uh, emerging vo uh, uh, viruses like Ebola. But you can look around uh, America today, and it's very clear they've done absolutely nothing uh, to prepare uh, American hospitals and uh, uh, health care people, doctors, nurses for Ebola. That's, that's pretty obvious. It's total um, confusion here. And at the very top, CDC and, and Frieden, uh, I believe, are just covering up uh, their, their own involvement here. And, and indeed, on uh, Friday, you had the smoking gun in, in the New York Times uh, where uh, Obama, uh, out of the ho White House, Friday afternoon, when it's no one was looking, announced they were going to put a halt on all this type of uh, uh, dirty bio-warfare work which admits that that's exactly what they had been doing until of last uh, uh, Friday. And if you look at the list, <laughs> Ebola isn't on the list, even though we know they do this type of work uh, on, on Ebola. And why is Ebola not on the list? Because then everyone would have said, well, what type of work were you doing on, on Ebola? And, so, and to your uh, point, Dr. Boy, uh, Dr. Boyle, these reports that come from outside of the U.S. media, because we're a little tied up with the Kardashians at the moment, these reports talk about the DOD, the Department of Defense, having given a contract worth $140 million. This is just a couple of months ago to Tecmira, a Canadian pharmaceutical company, to conduct Ebola research, which involved injecting and infusing quote, healthy humans with the deadly Ebola virus. That means That's the correct. DOD is listed as, would be listed as a collaborator in, quote, first in human Ebola clinical trial, which is NCT 0204175, starting in January 2014, shortly before the epidemic was declared in West Africa, what, in March? That's correct. So I, I think, you know, all you have to do is put, connect all these dots, I think, and uh, it's pretty clear, in my opinion, what what happened here. Right. The the problem is that um, uh, at the highest levels of government, the Obama administration, they're, they're, they know what happened here and they're covering it up. Uh, this guy, uh, Klain, uh Harvard Law School, the new czar, you know, he has no training. He, he's a political operative. And his whole objective here is to keep this uh, under control until after the. November 4 elections uh, so that the hopefully as they see it, the Democrats can keep control of the Senate. So, uh, yeah, it's just a massive uh, uh, cover up by CDC and IH. The other problem with the uh, mainstream news media is for experts, they're going to all these um, Dr. Mengele life scientists who did all this hideous research and work and development and asking them for their opinions on what's going on here. And, of course, they're, they're not going to say anything. They're going to spin. Uh, you have to understand, under my Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act, everyone involved in this uh, is facing life in prison. It's that simple. Uh, I, I resisted all efforts to put the death penalty in there because I, I opposed the death penalty. But they all face life in prison for this. Uh, so, of course, they're going to cover everything up. Uh, and lie about it and deceive the American people. Interestingly enough, Professor Boyle, The Guardian, the famous newspaper that gave us Edward Snowden, revealed the NSA, which is very much enjoying this conversation, by the way, as I enjoy knowing they're sitting back eating popcorn and being thrilled by every phoneme that comes out. TheGuardian.com reported, quote, the U.S. government funding of Ebola trials on healthy humans comes amid warnings by top scientists at Harvard and Yale that such virus experiments risked risk triggering a worldwide pandemic that's correct we you know those of us in the private sector who have never done uh dr mengele uh bio warfare work for the united states government uh and been on their payroll have said this for years there's no question about it i said uh in a, a documentary uh anthrax wars i said um 
this is a catastrophe waiting to happen. And I'm afraid it, it has now happened. Yeah. Harrison with you. You are listening to Go Harrison. You're listening to The Smart Show. You can follow us anytime on Twitter at Go Harrison, at Go Harrison. Same thing, Instagram, at Go Harrison. One word. Also, Facebook, Go Harrison. Same thing. Keeping it easy, keeping it fun. Uh, despite the grimness of the topic today, we are going to be giving away some trips to Europe and other fun things. All you have to do is follow us on Twitter at Go Harrison and uh, follow us also on Facebook. Say hi to us anytime as well. Keyword again, Go Harrison. Go Harrison dot com. Harrison with you. Hey, are you done with those cable bills going up month after month? Well, now you could do something about it. Write this number down, 855-469-2378. Imagine more of your favorite digital channels and 100% digital quality with DirecTV, all starting under a dollar a day with premium movie channels, everything for under a dollar a day. Now radio listeners can say sayonara to the growing cable monopolies and hello to a lot more for less money. Call 8554-MY-BEST right now for rock-bottom direct TV packages starting under a dollar a day and there's no equipment to buy. Pull out your major debit or credit card and call 855-469-2378. That's 855-469-2378. No more gouging from greedy cable operators. It's time to cut costs and start saving right now. 855-469-2378. If you're driving or podcasting and can't remember, 855-469-2378 or more easily, 855-4-MY-BEST. Simply go to the TVDeal.com, the TVDeal.com, or call 8554 My Best. Peering through the proctoscope of pop culture and politics, this is Harrison. Harrison with you. You are listening to Go Harrison. We are live streaming on the Progressive Radio Network, also on a variety of FMs up and down the west coast of California through the Pacifica Radio Network, along with Canada and Europe. We're talking to Professor Francis Boyle, leading American professor, practitioner, and advocate of international law. He's the man responsible for drafting the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989, the American Implementation Implementing legislation for the 1972 Biological Weapons Convention. Also a doctor of law, magna cum laude, as well as a Ph.D. in political science, both from Harvard University. And he's talking about mixing the live Ebola virus on purpose with the cold virus that you and I spread to each other in shopping malls and shaking hands and just hanging out together. Professor Boyle, we also have troops or military presence being sent to these different sectors of Africa. Cuba has sent some 150 physicians, I think. America, with a population of, what, 320 million, has sent all of seven doctors. But we've sent a lot of military guys. What do guys with machine guns, do you shoot a virus? Is that how it works? I, I just, I'm unclear. No, it's very clear. Uh, we sent in the uh, 101st uh, Airborne. Uh, and also uh, 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 3,000 of those people and uh, 250 Marines. The 101st Airborne, I, I think you know that uh, that uh, TV series Band of Brothers, right? Yeah. <laughs> These Wonderful. are elite fighters, yeah. as, as is the Marine Corps. They go in uh, under hostile fire if necessary. They kill anyone who gets in the way, and then they hold on to land they've already uh, uh obtained and then if necessary well in, in certainly in the case of the marines uh they move forward from there so uh these are not the these troops are not there to uh, uh treat anyone they're there to establish uh, a u.s military base in uh liberia uh the whole operation is under the control of uh, africa command uh, uh africom was set up by uh, bush jr uh, but they did not have a headquarters uh, in Africa. Liberia had offered to serve as their headquarters. So I believe this is being used as, as a pretext. Uh, the uh, uh, command headquarters for 101st Airborne uh, has now been moved to Liberia. So my guess is we're, we're going to see probably the whole 101st Airborne uh, uh, in, in Liberia and more Marines. Yeah, those 250 Marines come from uh, 
Camp Lejeune. Uh, you know, my father was in the Marine Corps uh, during World War II. He invaded Saipan, Tinian, and, and Okinawa, uh, Okinawa. Marines just kill anyone in their way until they, you know, accomplish what their objective is. That's that's what they're trained to do. So if the outbreak uh, continues in exponential infections, as they're predicting, at some point you just, as the, uh, well, I suppose as the Knesset in Israel refers to dealing with the Palestinians, you mow the lawn. You get, you, you delete uh, well, the Well, actually, there was a meeting uh, reported in the New York Times last week in Sierra Leone at Kenemum with all the... Uh, uh, international uh, uh, governmental organizations in charge of, supposedly in charge of this matter. And they made a decision there to give up treating every anyone and just send them to their homes to die. You can read that in the New York Times. And the uh, fellow in charge of uh, Sierra Leone uh, stalked out of the meeting and denounced them. So uh, it's very clear uh, the WHO, CDC, everyone else has, has really given up uh, on these people. MSF is there, they're trying, and the Cubans are trying, and some of the other uh, private NGOs are trying. But, you know, the heavy hitters, the governments, and, and these uh, uh, IGOs, international government organizations, undoubtedly did what, what their big funders told them to do, which is the United States, Britain, and, and the European states. So it's very clear... Um, no efforts will be made uh, really to uh, uh, save these people. Uh, and indeed, if you look at it, it, I think it's very clear at the beginning, no effort, meaningful effort was made uh, at all. Uh, the CDC, uh, I'm sure, uh, indeed it's been reported today, Department of Defense, NIH have a computer model on the spread of uh, uh, Ebola. I'm sure they've had that for quite some time. And they know exactly uh, what's going on here and what's going to happen um, uh, in the future, uh, including here in, in the United States. We're talking to Francis Boyle, a leading American professor, a practitioner, an advocate of international law, holding a doctor of law, magna cum laude, as well as a Ph.D. in political science, both from Harvard, author of Biowarfare and Terrorism a book that outlines how and why the United States government initiated, why it sustained, and then why it dramatically has expanded an illegal biological arms buildup, which also breaks down the fact that uh, the Ebola virus has been experimented upon live humans in the last six months all across Africa, and now there seems to be an outbreak. He also is responsible for drafting the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989, instrumental in our own government. Uh, he was the guy who implemented legislation for the 1972 Biological Weapons Convention. Professor Boyle, does that suggest then here in the United States, because really, do you want pandemic whoopee in the U.S.? Do you want uh, Wall Street to succumb to that? They would break out with the ultimate cure or at least a, you know, a way to, to stop this thing from hitting Mildred in Ohio and then spreading up through Alabama and, and causing serious havoc, unless there's an upside to that somehow. I really don't know, um, you know, exactly what the agenda is here in the, in the United States. Clearly, the drug companies are all going to cash in on this, Big Pharma. Prior to this, it is correct, Big Pharma did not do Ob Ebola research because there weren't big bucks in it. And that then was delegated to uh, uh, NIH and CDC and the Department of Defense and these 14,000 uh, other death scientists. But now Big Pharma uh, believes they can they can turn a buck, so they're getting into it and, and developing uh, all these so-called so vaccines that are uh, either worthless or dangerous uh, and uh, uh, very well could kill more people than would sa would be saved. Uh, and in any event, they're they're probably going to die anyway. So uh, that's that's Big Pharma for you. And in Africa. They've, as you quoted at the beginning, in Africa, that's what they've always done. Uh, uh, black Africans have always been uh, guinea pigs for uh, big pharma. So as they see it, they're going to cash in. As for, you know, the elite who run this country, uh, I can't say. But we spent $79 billion uh, developed, uh, allegedly to develop a uh, preventive vaccine for Ebola. Maybe they have it and they've already 
they've already had this. We do know that before the uh, anthrax attacks in uh, October 2001, and those were uh, that anthrax was clearly weaponized by United States government sources. The entire Bush uh, White House uh, was already on Cipro, uh, a uh, uh, antibacterial mm. um, uh, antibiotic. So, for all we know, uh, you know, some of these top people might have had uh, a, a successful vaccine that had already been developed. I, I just don't know about that. But it is curious that uh, $79 billion and, and they still don't have a vaccine. Well, you know, if they have a vaccine, it would be deep in the bowels of uh, Fort Detrick or uh, Galveston or something like that. And to your point, Dr. Boyle, as we finish the conversation, I'm holding right here a missing Department of Defense Appropriations Bill for 1970. It's a hearing, Subcommittee of the Committee on Appropriations House of Representatives, and it is for, quote, a synthetic biological agent within the next five to ten years, and they got $10 million under the Nixon administration, it would probably be possible to make a new infective microorganism refractory to the immunological and therapeutic processes upon which we depend to maintain our relative freedom from infectious diseases. Something like a, an HIV virus, for instance. So we have this bill right here in print. A lot of these things go missing. Um, but it's right there in public record, or certainly was once upon a time, as you point out, pre-2001, um, asking money for synthetic, synthetic biological agents, which would kill people. So we have these kinds of proofs, and it's important when we look at this Zaire Ebola, and there are multiple strains of Ebola. We all think there's just Ebola, but there's bunches of them that have different effects, right? That's correct. That's for the uh, uh, appropriation, right. Uh, Seymour Martin Hirsch, the Pulitzer Prize winner, wrote the definitive uh, expose of this in uh, 1968 that the United States government had developed an offensive uh, biological warfare industry uh, all over the country and were researching things like that. This was before uh, we became a party to the Biological Weapons Convention in 1974. Th uh, my assessment of the situation was that uh, a lot of that research was driven underground at CDC, NIH, um, uh, Fort Detrick, and other places. They never really abandoned it, but they continued it uh, uh, on uh, lower, more uh, discreet levels until the uh, Reagan administration came to power in 1981, and all the uh, neocons uh, uh, under Reagan truly believe in, in developing biological weapons. You can uh, find the citation that for in my book, Biowarfare and Terrorism. So they began to put you know, billions of dollars uh, into this. I, I can't recall the exact figure. Uh, and then it was ramped up by Clinton in his uh, second term uh, under the uh, influence of this uh, Richard Danzig, Secretary of the Navy, uh, who is now cashed out uh, by being on boards of all these uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, uh, firms. And uh, then under Bush Jr., uh, you know, it was $79 billion, uh since then. So I think with the $79 billion, uh what we have really done is reconstructed the offensive uh, biowarfare uh, industry here in America that's clearly illegal and criminal uh, that we used to have uh, as exposed by uh, Cy Hirsch in 1968, right? Well, I want to thank you for this conversation, uh, grim as it is, uh, enlightening to be sure, and I appreciate it. Uh, we'll probably reach out to you again soon enough to get updates on this, but I'm so grateful you spent the time you did with us. We've been talking to uh, Professor Francis Boyle, leading American professor, practitioner, and advocate of international law. He's the man responsible for drafting the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989, the American Implementing Legislation, 
for the 1972 Biological Weapons Convention. We learned today that you can do these medical experiments on live humans in Africa if they're not signatories to any kind of biological weapons convention, in fact. So they didn't sign the contract. They're not included. We can use them as a Petri dish, and uh, we leave the morality out of it, and it works out just fine unless the thing gets out of hand. Uh, Professor Boyle also served on the board of directors of Amnesty International, represented Bosnia-Herzegovina at the World Court, and he teaches international law at the University of Illinois, which is where he is right at the moment in Champaign, holds a Doctor of Law magna cum laude as well as a Ph.D. in political science, both from Harvard University, author of Bio-Warfare and Terrorism, Bio-Warfare and Terrorism, a book that outlines how and why the United States government initiated, has sustained, and then dramatically expanded an illegal biological arms buildup. And I want to thank you so much for joining us today, Professor Boyle. Thanks a lot, and my best to everyone out there. Bye-bye. Go Harrison. Reverse engineering the news. The Dr. Strangelove Report. Harrison here, inviting you to hang with us all week long. You can follow us on social media, and we'll follow you back. Don't you love that? A little tit for tat. You can follow us on Facebook, keyword, Go Harrison. Same thing with Twitter, at Go Harrison, and Instagram, Go Harrison. Again, follow us on Twitter, at Go Harrison, one word. Facebook, Go Harrison, and Instagram, Go Harrison. Very much looking forward to hanging with you. From Hollywood, it's Harrison. Harrison with you. Hey, are you done with those cable bills going up month after month? Well, now you could do something about it. Write this number down, 855-469-2378. Imagine more of your favorite digital channels and 100% digital quality with DirecTV, all starting under a dollar a day with premium movie channels. Everything for under a dollar a day. Now radio listeners can say sayonara to the growing cable monopolies and hello to a lot more for less money. Call 8554-MY-BEST right now for rock-bottom direct TV packages starting under a dollar a day and there's no equipment to buy. Pull out your major debit or credit card and call 855-469-2378. That's 855-469-2378. No more gouging from greedy cable operators. It's time to cut costs and start saving right now. 855-469-2378. If you're driving or podcasting and can't remember, 855-469-2378. Or more easily, 855-4-MY-BEST. Simply go to the TVDeal.com, the TVDeal.com, or call 8554 My Best. <laughs> 